What's going on guys? Today we are going to revisit the tutorial on the Testo 410i small vane anemometer. I posted a video a couple weeks ago, I think maybe two weeks ago, um, just doing a quick walk through traversing a 20 by 25 return grill at my house. And after posting it, I got some information from a couple guys that were concerned that the free area I was using in the calculation was incorrect. Um, after doing some research and a little bit of help from Joe Shearer, uh, we were able to determine that in fact I was using the incorrect free space and this particular 20 by 25 grill that I'm using has about 69 to 70 percent free space. So just wanted to revisit this video um, just because I don't want incorrect information being out there and if I can correct it then I will do so which is what we're going to do today. So we're going to basically be checking the same return grill, doing the same traverse, um, but with the correct free space, and we'll see what our numbers come out to. So before we do that, um, here's just a quick look at the Testo 410i in small vein anemometer. Very compact, um, very durable. Um, you can put it in your tool bag. has this nice positive cover, which I have unsnapped right now because it does snap on there very well uh, to protect your veins and like I said it does have a very positive uh, as you can hear very positive connection so it's not not falling off or coming loose it's in fact it's very difficult to take off with uh, one hand while I'm videoing you also have a small lanyard hole up there so you can clip it to a tool bag or just with the size of it you can just toss it in a pocket no different than a screwdriver and uh, be good to go. So really like these uh, Testo Smart Probes. So we are going to go ahead and connect this to our phone and we'll go ahead and go over to the grill and get this traverse started and see what kind of numbers we get. All right, we got our Testo 410i connected to our Smart Probe app. And if we go down to the little gear down here for settings we go to configure measurements and you can see we have 20 by 20 scroll up we're at 70 percent free space and return and if you go to the top you can see we are at timed average which is the the best way I found when you're doing any sort of any sort of airflow testing because you're going to get different velocities different uh, CFM and different areas of the grill so it's not going to be completely even so that's the best thing I found um, I mentioned this in the other video but I'll do it again you can see the play button down here at the bottom you can either hit that on the screen to start your traverse and then hit the pause button which will be there then you can see a stop button here or you can do the start and pause just via the power button on the 410i which is what I like to do so I don't have to worry about sitting here watching the uh, the screen of the phone while I am recording my information. So that's what we're gonna do now, but we're so ready to go. system, if I haven't mentioned, is a Bryant, it's a two and a half ton, set up for 350 CFM per ton. So we are looking for just under 900 CFM, somewhere around 875 in a perfect world. So basically what you wanna do when you're traversing a grill is consistency is the key to accuracy. So you wanna keep a consistent depth away from your grill you also want to try and keep a consistent speed as you're traversing as well as trying to keep the anemometer as level as possible um, again when you're uh, when you're traversing any grills or anything like that consistency is going to be your best uh, your best friend for accuracy so once you're ready to go you can just hit this power button and that starts our time traverse and we are just going to follow our grill again trying to be as consistent as possible. I usually like to do two two laps on each set of louvers. And we'll just keep on going. And the reason why the traverse is usually the more accurate way to go is you're going to have a lot of different velocity changes throughout the grill. So you just don't want to pick one spot and hope that it's accurate. It's a much, much better option to just traverse the entire grill over a timed period and that will give you a better idea as far as your airflow goes. And we 
we've got one more set of louvers to go and usually once I double back and get close to the end and get my finger ready to hit the pause button and just click that pause button and we will come look at our information and see how we let's look. Let's take a look at our numbers here. I went ahead and did uh, four separate traverses just so you can get an idea on the consistency and accuracy of the particular tool and as you can see 797, 793, 771, and 795 the tool is very consistent, very accurate. You can see our temperatures are 81.1. You can see the first one was when I just got the uh, the tools out of the truck so it was a little warm keep the house about 76 during the day and as you can see it dropped right down in that 76 degree range here is our feet per minute again very consistent as you can see 328, 326, 317 and 327 type of error is return but just gives you hopefully a, a feel for how accurate this particular tool is and can't recommend it enough again it's a great tool very compact, very easy to carry around with you, and um, yeah, excellent, excellent tool. So, highly recommended. Hope that helps. Again, thanks for everybody with their input, um, for letting me know that there was some incorrect information in my last tutorial. Hopefully this uh, addresses that. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.